In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam question on the arithmetic mean, or more precisely, its properties. The arithmetic mean is the most often used measure of central tendency, and everybody knows how to calculate it, but not everybody realizes or appreciates its properties, which is something you may be asked about in the exam. So if this is something you want to get right, keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question. The table below gives the annual total returns for the Qualtic Fund since its inception eight years ago. This is the same data which I used in the previous question on the uh, mode and the median. So the data is here. Then Brian Cormack and Andrea Fitch, candidates in the CFA Level 1 exam, are discussing the historic performance of the fund. Fitch makes the following statement. The arithmetic mean of Qualtic's annual return as is 2.025, with deviations from the mean totaling 16.2%. And Cormac adds, as a measure of central tendency, the arithmetic mean has the advantage of using all the information available about the observations. On the other hand, this property makes it sensitive to extreme values. And we've got some uh, possible uh, answers or statements concerning who's right, who's wrong, and with respect to what. Okay, I think the easiest thing to do is just to, you know, compute the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean is, as I said, the most basic measure of so-called central tendency. So arithmetic mean is simply the total, the sum of the observations divided by the number of those observations. And in this case, I'm going to take my calculator. I'm not even going to show you my calculator necessarily for this one. It's so easy that you don't necessarily need to see it. Let me just open my calculator up and just type in these returns, but you know, being conscious of whether it's positive or negative. So it's two plus 3.5 minus 0 0.5, but plus 1.2 plus 0 0.3, but minus 2.6, plus 0 0.3, and 12, okay. And then this total, which came in at 16.2, I divide by 8, that's the number of observations, and I get 2.025%, that's the uh, arithmetic mean. So 16.2 divided by 8 gave us 2.025%, brilliant. Okay, now that was the easy bit. How about the next bit, which is all about computing the, um, well, um, deviations from the mean. And this is something you should need to really compute if you understand the properties of the mean in, um, and appreciate, because this, this will absolutely not be 16.2. It's something different. And you may already know it if you don't. Uh, follow the logic that I'm going to show you here. Okay, if the arithmetic mean here is 16.2, which is some, sorry, not 16.2, if the arithmetic mean, which we just computed, is 2.025, 16.2 was obviously the sum of all the observations, then what this question is asking about is what's going to be the... Uh, some of the deviations, the distances from the mean for all the data. And let's start with the lowest point over there, which was the year six return. It was a negative 2.6. So if this is negative 2.6%, the question is, what's the distance to the mean? Well, let me quickly do this, uh, but it's 2.025 minus a negative 2.6. So the effectively plus 2.6, that's going to be a distance of 4.625, but it's negative. That's the deviation from the mean of this one. It's a negative 4.625 from here to there. Now, the uh, next one, if we go in ascending order, which you don't have to do, you can just do it, um, in any order, realistically, maybe in chronological, maybe I should have done that, is 0 0.5. And the question is, what's the distance from here to there? Once again, the same logic. So it's 2.025 minus a negative 0 0.5, so plus 0 0.5. And the deviation here is 
2.525 and it's negative because this observation lies below right how about the uh, next one the next one is um i guess it's 0 0.3 isn't it but it's a positive 0 0.3 so this uh, difference is definitely uh, getting smaller it's shrinking and it's a difference between 2.025 and 0 0.3 and this is just 1.725 okay and um it's negative because 0 0.3 lies below the mean however 0 0.3 appears in our data set twice so basically two times i've got the same observation and the same deviation from the mean now the next one is 1.2 so we're getting closer and for this one it's 2.025 minus 1.2 that gives still a negative 0 0.825 okay the next one is 2%. Well, this is really, really close over here. And obviously the distance, no need to calculate. This is still a negative, but it's literally just 0 0.25, isn't it? And um, right, then we've got two observations which are going to be on the right-hand side of this uh, axis of this line because they're higher than the uh, mean. So we've got a 3.5 over here and we've got a 12, which obviously um, would be further out if this was drawn to scale. So um, 3.5 minus 2.025, that gives a positive deviation of 1.475 and this one is 12 minus 2.025 that's even more positive that's a 9.975 okay so these are all the observations which i painstakingly computed for your benefit however the beauty of the mean is what happens when you compute the total of these because that's what the question tells you uh, or that's what Cormac no that's what Fitch I think says yeah the arithmetic mean of Qualtex annual returns is 2.025 well that was absolutely right with deviations from the mean totaling 16.2 now 16.2 was the sum of all the um all the uh, observations but what's the uh, sum of the deviations well let me do this on the calculator really quickly 4.625 negative minus 2.525 minus 1.725 and another 1.725 obviously negative then 0 0.825 negative minus and here uh, yeah I've got to be extra careful and I wasn't I wrote this down I can see with uh without this additional zero over here, which is absolutely critical. So this is a negative, but it's 0 0.025, not just 0 0.25. And now add these to 1.475 and 9.975. And I'm looking at my calculator at a result, which is 0, 0.0. So look, that's, one of the fundamental properties of the um, mean. The mean is a value, or the arithmetic mean, which makes the sum of all the deviations from it, obviously when we respect the signs, equal to zero. That's its basic property. So in, a, in an exam, never compute this. Always appreciate that it's going to be zero, um, and you should get the points. So I can see that Fitch is incorrect, but only in respect or with respect to the um, deviations. Let's have a look at answer A. Fitch is incorrect with respect to the value of the arithmetic mean, but incorrect with uh, but correct with respect to the uh, uh, total of deviations from the mean. Well, this one is uh, not right. It's uh, it's it's a wrong statement. Um, how about Cormac? As a measure of central tendency, the arithmetic mean has the advantage of using all the information available about the observations. That's true. 
uh, because all observations were used. Nothing was discarded here. Uh, unlike uh, when we, in the previous question, which I encourage you to watch, on the me on the median and the mode. For example, when you were looking at the mode, you were just looking at the single most often occurring item, completely disregarding everything else. And when we were computing the median, we were trying to find the middle of a data set arranged in ascending or descending order, but completely lose information about the scale, the size of the other items. They're irrelevant. So here, the arithmetic mean does use information about all the observations. On the other hand, this property makes it sensitive to extreme values. Absolutely right. The sensitive, uh, sorry, the mean is, the arithmetic mean is very sensitive to extreme values, which we call outliers, such as this 12. You know, realistically, it's because of this very high value appearing just once that the mean gets pushed or pulled so high up even though most of the observations actually lie below it, it's this 12 which uh, produces such a high uh, mean result. So the mean suffers from this disadvantage. It's sensitive to outliers, and very often when we publish statistics, we tend not to focus on the mean but something else, uh, especially when providing data on, for example, incomes or household um, wealth. Um, the mean is not perfect, but therefore Cormac is going to be correct in the statements uh, that he makes. So I guess the answer to this question is going to be answer B. Cormac is correct.